Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi there. Okay, I'm gonna give everybody a few more minutes uh, to get dialed in before we get started. Make sure that you are putting yourself on the attendance list and either no update next to your name if you don't have any updates, or if you do, just a quick one or two words about what it is and we'll get you added into the agenda. Just a reminder, I do still need scribes. It's Mark, I'll try to scribe today. It's about my turn. Thanks, Ray, thanks, Mark. I'm going to give folks about one more minute. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you uh, go ahead and please add yourself to the attendance if you are just joining us. Um, I've linked the meeting stock in the chat. If you're a new member and you have an update or if you have an update, please provide uh, your name in the document and a parentheses next to your name if there's no update or if you do have one, just a brief one or two words about what it is. Um, if you're part of a working group, please make sure that you provide your update at, at the time that we do the round robin check-in. Um, if there are any specific issues or tickets, uh, put them next to your name in the attendance list and we'll go through them all. Uh, so I've got two facilitators, Mark and Ray today. Thank you both for volunteering. We appreciate it. 
Um, so I'm going to go to the attendance list and start calling on folks. Mark, go ahead. Hey everybody, this is to be a really quick thing. We had an interesting scenario involving GitHub and wondered if uh, folks had any corporate enterprise rules around uh, the use of GitHub in either direction, uh, you know, taking content from there and using it in local repos or uh, uploading content. And that would include um, documents, not just code snips. How do you mean like general contributions or use of uh, free and open source products? Yep, all, all of the above. So, you know, the concern is uh, leakage of intellectual property or code snips or accidental release of uh, pipeline artifacts that might have credentials in them. So, you know, the usual approach to this is some kind of DLP policy lockdown, but GitHub is kind of special in this respect. Yeah, I mean, from, uh, from what I know, I think uh, many organizations have gone through this and some have formed their own policies and uh, GitHub actions like post hooks to scrape through uh, this, either the source code or the documentation that's getting checked in to figure out if there is any confidential information. As far as I'm aware of, there isn't any push from GitHub itself to say like, okay, this is this is a quote unquote a compliant repository that I'll basically make sure that it checks because obviously the cost of uh, providing that is going to be huge. The uh, there is and uh, so even we use that there is a, a scanning tool so this this is as far as like passwords getting checked and everything as far as the scanning for any open source libraries for vulnerabilities and stuff there is there are tools uh, that do that that you can possibly incorporate uh, in your build chain when you pull the content in uh, that is as much as uh, github consumption that I know that exists and the rest is all like still a work in progress. Right, Thank, thanks, that's helpful. We are less concerned about vulnerability scanning because we can always do that in the local repos. It's more, you know, accidental leakage of code that reveals something about APIs that is proprietary or involves uh, content that we are under third party legal agreements not to disclose, but the developers don't know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also kind of design information that might be uh, tied to covenants for intellectual property. And, you know, it's sort of developers being grown up stuff to some extent, but it became clear when we looked into this that you can't just write a DLP policy for it and, and call it done. Correct. Well, Mark, um, you know, uh, a couple things. So, um, you know, a couple instances where, where I've uh, encountered this and, and you know, uh, still trying to triangulate, uh, you know, the, the problem a bit. Um, so, uh, you know, working with a major tax prep company, um, you know, help them uh, set up a, um, a release pipeline. And one of the ways that they chose to control uh, anything going out of the house to GitHub, uh, to public GitHub, um, is, you know, basically, uh, you know, systems or IT uh, is the sole holder of the keys to uh, publish on behalf of the, the corporation to, uh, to the, the public GitHub. Uh, individuals uh, contribute, but you know there's uh, you know a control step before things go out the door. Um, is is that the problem set, or is it uh, data uh, location and uh, you know validating you know kind of the um, the opposite of what um, uh, Black Duck does in terms of uh, code identification and, and, you know, locating those assets on, um, you know, the public and I guess eventually the dark web. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I think it's mostly the former. I hadn't thought of okay. that idea of having a fewer number of logins. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's certainly an option uh, we could look at. I'm not sure how we could control that exactly, but there might be a way to do that. So that's, uh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. So Black Duck, you know, it's, 
the more we thought about this, the concern is, you know, developers that are just out of school want to use this. This is a sure. uh, something that's integrated into their kind of ethos about how mm -hmm. to do development, right? So uh, we, we kind of don't want to discourage that. But on the other hand, uh, some of the best work there, even when we voluntarily want to contribute to GitHub, we kind of need to know about that from an enterprise. Right. I'm saying we here, but I'm trying to, you know, paint this in the broadest stroke possible because you know, thinking about this as potential contributors to cloud native content or consumers of it or trying to build new products that uh, either leverage intellectual property that's kind of revealed in the public space. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an important line you always want to continue to kind of, kind of draw. Uh, but then there's just sort of the, uh, the management of the pipeline, right, which is probably needs to be including documents, not just the code pipeline. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, my my opinion, not my, my corporate experience is that, um, you know, corporate leadership doesn't fully understand what it has to govern. So therefore, you can't control it. Right. Uh, until until you uh, are able to, you know, have an index and complete purview of uh what's going on then you you can't uh you know manage it uh you know out of the house um you know a, a friend of mine went to uh work with a, a major um construction uh company that was you know in charge of uh, of large scale um you know uh private and public um build outs and um they for example leveraged box to uh, basically bag and tag all the assets and, and through uh, you know, Box as the cloud network, they were able to say, all right, these assets with this signature are, um, are you know, uh, tagged as secret and uh, you know, uh, anytime they show up in anyone's system, uh, you know, they are, you know, instantly deleted. Um, but you, you need, uh, you know, control of the system like you would have in a deployed, you know, cloud infrastructure like Box would provide uh, to be able to uh, architect that. Um, you know, once, once that goes out of the house, uh, um, you know, can you reliably fingerprint and you know get the signature on that? Um, you know, I, I haven't seen it yet. Um, it's probably technically possible, um, but again, uh, you know, uh, I would go back to you have to be aware to control. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mark, it's I, I would. Um, this is a really good and fascinating problem set that I think a lot of organizations have. I would like you to actually create a thread in the channel. That way we can open it up to more folks to provide comments and feedback on, because I, I don't believe that this is unique to one organization. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can resolve this problem or at least buy down the risk a little bit. So definitely I'd create a thread in the Slack channel to get some more feedback. Sure, and you know, just to round this out, the, the sort of bottom up what evidence management that one encounters here is the uh, high end tools that some enterprises acquire will scour these repos for, we'll just say items of concern, keys, references to the brand, um, uh, certain things like metadata that might be uh, local to the build process. And so these things that get escalated as alerts through uh, the uh, security teams who have very limited insight generally to the developer stack that couldn't be involved in it. So um, it's something that Scott both, and I don't know that thinking about the developer chain is top down exactly, but the alerting system is definitely bottom up. And the top down part of it is really managing through process as well as standardization probably. So, okay, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try to open a thread to, to cover this as a general topic because we we kind of want to encourage this right the the code sharing and contribution process but um, there's what there are boundary conditions that we want developers to be aware of 
developers and and commenters too probably mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's one of the big existential challenges that we have in terms of security. You know, we're, we're architecting you know, the security of the system, but then there are the bits that um, you know, we, we are uh, responsible for. And um, you know, it, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> yeah, understood. Yeah. yeah thanks, Dan. <laughs> All right, JJ. Um, thanks again, Mark, and thanks again, Dan. So if you were following along with that conversation, Mark is going to drop a thread in the Slack channel to help open up the dialogue about that. So JJ, you're up next. Hey, Emily. Thanks. Uh, so I just want to give, uh, this is JJ. I just want to give an update on uh, all, the, all the effort that uh, people have done uh, on white paper so far and uh, bring uh, bring some attention to that from all of you folks. Uh, I think Emily has been uh, shepherding a lot of it. Uh, we are in the process of like uh, breaking down the white paper into uh, into a consumable chunk uh, that should happen in the next three weeks. Uh, so right now we have uh, somewhat of a uh, reference uh, uh, I shouldn't call it reference architecture, but it's more of a more of a frame to think through in terms of uh, cloud native security um, infographics that's been done as well. Um, I would, uh, if you do have time, I think it's uh, there is a channel for uh, six security white paper. Uh, if you want to join there, and uh, there is conversation happening there that you can follow along and uh, leave comments, feedbacks as we go through this process. That's it from me. All right, thanks, JJ. Dan, you're up next. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, today or actually tomorrow, um, officially uh, um, ends my term as uh, chair. Um, it's been a long journey. Uh, you know, we we started. Uh, I think at this point, uh, nearly three years ago. Uh, with what was at the, the time, the Safe Working Group, um, Secure Access for Everyone uh, is the acronym there. Um, then um, the Safe Working Group became the sort of uh, guinea pig and first um, SIG in, um, in the CNCF. Uh, so, you know, fantastic to, to work with JJ and Sarah to you know, take that sort of seed idea and, you know, bring that into um, the CNCF and really, uh, you know, begin to define how we do uh, special interest groups here in the CNCF, um, you know, with all the uh, other groups that we're, you know, affiliated and, and partner with, uh, you know, bringing that, that up to the level of uh, the CNCF uh, was fantastic. Um, it's been a year, uh, you know, this last year has been, uh, brutal for, um, for all of us, uh, with the pandemic, but also, um, you know, particularly challenging for, uh, our, um, small team of, of chairs, uh, and, um, you know, I, I had a, a three month extension to sort of, uh, help, uh, fill those gaps. Uh, and you know, I, I've, I've been able to find uh, you know a, a really worthy you know, replacement. Uh, we're still uh, you know in the in the process of ratifying that. Uh, so uh, you know, I'll kind of hold that for for next week, and we'll uh, uh, share that out, out officially. Um, I'm just uh, I will uh, be uh, moving into emeritus status as chair. Uh, I still plan on on. Uh, staying active and being involved in the working group, uh, though I, I will, uh, you know, uh, take this opportunity to sort of ratchet down um, the amount of time that I'm I'm, I'm spending on the SIG. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, kicking off uh, or you know already begun uh, working on uh, a new startup, but uh, uh, you know this will uh, enable me to dedicate more of my time and effort to that. Um, you know. Real quick, uh, you know what I'll be doing there. Um, you know, with the, the new startup effort, uh, you know, I've 
Um, I come more from uh, the application space than, uh, you know, kind of cloud and infrastructure uh, space, you know, decade of, uh, you know, bringing uh, Node.js uh, into the ecosystem and, you know, commercializing that. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of working backwards from the, the needs of the ecosystem uh, and, you know, helping uh, organizations that are looking to, you know, cement the key bits and pieces of, uh, you know, the, the underlying uh, application implementation uh, that are, you know, not secret sauce, that are, you know, really um, what we'd like to call solve problems, uh, but oftentimes they're not. Uh, and uh, we'll be starting with uh, identity as a service. So, um, you know, lots, lots of fun uh, sort of heads down time uh, in the next few months, uh, you know, getting that out, uh, you know, we expect to have initial SaaS, uh, in Q1, uh, 2021. Uh, and, uh, if you know anyone who is, uh, in, uh, you know, kind of, a mature stage, uh, series B to C, uh, company that, uh, um, you know, needs, uh, you know, technical leadership. Uh, my co-founder and I are, are both uh, experienced CTOs and uh, we're uh, helping folks uh, sort of, you know, land uh, that uh, maturity stage um, CTO uh, oversight and involvement and while we're, um, you know, continuing to build out that, uh, uh, that infrastructure. So exciting times ahead. Um, new leaders uh, coming, and um, you know, I, I see such a, a bright future for for this group, and you know, I'm, I'm uh, happy and, and honored uh, by everything that, that we've uh, accomplished so far, and look forward to uh, you know everything that that uh, um, new leaders and all of y'all will be producing in the years to come. Yeah, I mean, I want to take a moment to. Uh, thank and express, uh, and I think we all should express our gratitude to uh, what Dan has done for this group. And I think he hasn't done enough justice to say how impactful he was to uh, having this group bootstrapped and kickstarted. So it was way back, like what Dan said, uh, uh, three years back, there wasn't, there was just uh, uh, me, Dan, and then Sarah. <laughs> And uh, this group wasn't uh, wasn't a thing. And safe working group, we went and uh, we had some core values and philosophies with which we wanted to form this group. And then we all uh, carried forward that as a value uh, in terms of trying to make it more neutral, more informational, uh, more uh, educative for the entire of the ecosystem. And all the values that Dan carries from his prior experience of uh, trying running an open community and then uh, uh, having people collaborate in a constructive way has shaped the culture of this group significantly, as you can see in terms of like how, uh, how this group's run. So I do want to take the time or all of us to take the time to basically appreciate and uh, uh, I don't think appreciate is, a, is a, <laughs> enough of a thing for what Dan has done. Uh, but I'm I'm not good in like uh, good in my own uh, language either to express how much of a uh, how much of an impact Dan had in this whole group. So thank you, Dan. Thank you, JJ. Yeah, yes. yeah. Go ahead. Who else wants to lead to this? We're going to pile it on here. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. Let's do it. <laughs> There's no better way to do this. <laughs> Dan, you've been really fantastic to work with in this SIG, and I cannot express to you enough how awesome it is to see you and Sarah and JJ working together to make the SIG what it is today. I remember when I first heard about the CNCF SIG security, it was at a presentation at KubeCon probably about three years ago at this point. Um, and I had no idea what I was getting involved in at the time, but I dove in with like my first issue and my very first PR was with this group. So I especially want to thank you and Sarah and JJ for putting in all the hard work, all the love and all the time to make this what it is today. And I, 
I would feel comfortable speaking on behalf of all of the attendees to any of the security day events that would not have been possible had this group not existed in the first place and the culture that you all have instilled within this group. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the piece I wanna add, Dan, is this, that uh, one of the things I say a lot to the folks in the day job is that security is both broad and deep. It's becoming hyper-specialized and there's no one person that's going to know all the tools, everything from cryptography to code vulnerabilities to how to handle incidents in real time. It's too much. And yet at the same time, wind the clock a little bit back and you've got Kubernetes wasn't even on the landscape, you know, and now right. it's, a, it's a threat vector, right? And so mm -hmm. that's the horizontal space that continues to, to move out at the same pace. And what I thought your leadership really brought to this is an ability to see a big picture and the minutia of important details at the same time. I think that's what tech leadership has to do because uh, coding and building systems that work involves both kinds of vision. And, you know, I've really appreciated that kind of leadership in this kind of group. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> Anyone else want to gush over Dan? Gosh. Um, I could keep going, but uh. <laughs> I think we all could. I'm gonna start crying. So <laughs> that's okay. This is a safe space. <laughs> you know. Um, um, yeah, that was impactful. Yeah, you can go. So we have a new member to SIG, uh, Ite, Ite, I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Hey, it's fine, thank you. <laughs> it happens all the time. Uh, my name is Itai. Uh, actually, let me turn on my webcam just a sec. Hi, everyone. Hey, so um, I just wanted to introduce myself uh, because this is the first time I'm joining the call. I actually have been listening to the recordings for for a while, so um, uh, I don't feel that this is my first time, but uh, the first time that I'm joining live, and I do intend to start joining um, live uh, going forward. So uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Itai. I work in uh, Aqua Security on uh, open source uh, security stuff. Uh, maybe you've heard about uh, Cube Hunter, Cube Bench, uh, Trivi, Tracy, so on. So this projects uh, comes out of uh, my team. And uh, I've also been involved with uh, CNCF security related stuff like uh, uh, the CKS exam now and uh, KubeCon, I've been a co-chair of the security track. So I've been involved with CNCF security related stuff and uh, never really involved with SIG security. So uh, I, I want to fix that. Um, and um, so I, I am looking for uh, ways that I can contribute and uh, be involved more with uh, this group. So uh, just uh, saying hi, uh, showing my face here, and uh, nice to get to know everyone face to face. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Is welcome, there... Itai. I, I can make a suggestion. We actually, Cube Bench came up on this morning's uh, policy work group discussion. So. Uh, if you will put, I'll post the link to that discussion, but that might be a natural uh, subgroup for you to, to join into as well, Itai. Welcome. Yeah, again. actually, I've been uh, lurking on the WG uh, policy group as well. So um, feel free to pull me in into any discussion. I'd love to help. I appreciate it. Fantastic. All right. Are there any more updates from anyone? Uh, and this is Robert. I'll just uh, put out the weekly call for volunteers on the cloud custodian assessment. Uh, we still would like to get a few more reviewers on the Google Doc that Kapil and team have provided. Um, so either uh, just add, add, to, add yourself to the GHI and I'll reach out or add yourself to the uh, Slack channel for the assessment. I think it's uh, sec assessment, sec dash assessment dash custodian. And there's lots of details posted there. 
um, but would love to get a few more eyes on the, the, on the Google Drive uh, document that Kapil provided. Uh, I can help with that. Uh, can you just um, elaborate what kind of assessment uh, are you requiring? Yeah, definitely. It's a, and, and the documentation of, of our assessment process is, is in the, the GitHub repo, but just in brief, uh, you know, projects, especially those who are in the sandbox uh, or beyond, submit a document uh, describing their security posture, you know, risk assessment and controls that they may have implemented. And then this volunteer group will review that documentation and then make suggestions, recommendations, or in, in specific cases, you know, maybe concrete recommendations for improvements and then review that. We will review that first with this group. And I think uh, Emily mentioned that there's a presentation next week for Keycloak, is that correct? Yes, there is. I actually just dropped the link to the assessments in the chat, um, but it's also in our repo. So anything that you would like to know about the assessments, how they work, roles and responsibilities, kind of expected time frame and time commitment, um, that's all there. And next week we do have uh, the security assessment for key cloak being presented. So if you're interested in learning what the outcomes of them look like, uh, definitely dial into that one. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll reach out over Slack. Just uh, the person who uh, just answered me, I only see your phone number. So if you could just give, your, give me your name so I can uh, reach out over Slack. Yes, this is, this is Robert Ficalia, and I'm on the uh, SEC assessment custodian. Uh, unfortunately, okay. I lost my Zoom internet, so <laughs> I had to dial back. <laughs> okay, Robert. Okay, great. Thanks. Emily, before you move on, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to jump in. Um, it's, I'd, I'd love to get your, your feedback on you know, what we call uh, our security assessment process, given your background. Um, you know, it is um, much more lightweight and less technical than um, you know, it's sort of the, the traditional um, you know, assessment process that you're going to go run something through. Uh, technically, it's a bit closer to uh, a peer review and a uh, sort of community, um, you know, gathering and assimilation of uh, context. It's, you know, the mechanism uh, in which, uh, you know, uh, here in the CNCF, we have all these uh, sort of member companies and member projects, and, you know, they're going through their, um, you know, uh, incubation and graduation process, uh, you know, and it's our responsibility uh, as the you know, SIG responsible for security uh, to have awareness and help them uh, succeed in the CNCF process. Uh, so, um, you know, we call it an assessment, uh, you know, along the way, it's, it's, you know, a little bit more self-assessment and, you know, uh, more peer review. Uh, so, you know, both in terms of, you know, how we're uh, delivering this and and even um, you know if if after you've you've uh, gone through and uh, you know seen the, the workflow um, you know if we can uh, sort of nudge that naming uh, into uh, you know naming's hard uh, you know nudge that naming into something that is um, you know both meaningful and uh, you know doesn't have an existing meaning um, I think that would be uh, you know, help in the long term, uh, but absent a better suggestion, um, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, th that's what it's called today. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the questions I had. Hi, this is Michelle Traberka, and um, I contributed to the cloud custodian assessment, but I feel a little, um, I've done assessments in the past, application security assessments. I mean, that's been my role in the past. And I'm a little uncomfortable with it being referred to as a security assessment because um, yeah. it, it, the criteria isn't clear and that's fine. I mean, uh, you know, given the CNCF's role, but it's not really, I think it, it could be mis, misinterpreted by being called a security assessment in that, um, I mean, that's a special thing. It has specific right. criteria. Um, I don't want to be pissy about it, but. Um, sure. That's no, it's a thing. My absolutely. Okay, 
Yeah, and, and, and I think there was a know, long... we've we've constantly had to course correct and sort of uh, you know correct uh, misunderstandings uh, that folks have it uh, because of the, the the moniker, and you know it ultimately if we land on a, a better name, um, it serves everyone's uh, purpose. What we're doing, you know, is, is better described, and um, you know the the value that folks get, um, you know, it's it's its own thing. Um, not necessarily, you know, that, that thing that they're, you know, probably going to have to do anyway. Can I recommend and I think that we open an issue on this particular thing? That way we can incorporate uh, more folks in the discussion. There's not very many people on the call today. And I know that there are several individuals who um, are really involved in the existing assessment process that we have that would love um, this kind of feedback and a chance to engage in the conversation. So I don't know if Michelle, that's you or someone else to start that issue. We can um, bring it up at maybe another meeting and highlight it as well as have the, the dialogue through the comments. Does that work for everyone? I press one there. Uh, yeah, create, create them as a GitHub issue, start commenting on them, uh, not on a Slack channel uh, so that the trail stays and then we'll be able to see the discussion. Yeah, and once the ticket's uh, created, just drop a link to the ticket in the channel and that way everyone's aware of it. That would be great. So Michelle, would you take the AI for creating that? Wait, I work in finance. Does that put me on the hook for this? Is everybody gonna be mad at me now? No. <laughs> oh, this works in finance. You don't want anybody mad at you. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a group. It's a group. Uh, no, I, we do. I mean, like we've argued about uh, several of these things before, uh, and it is a. Uh, it's one of the traits of this group that, uh, yeah, nothing's personal. So we'll we'll. Okay. we'll this, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I my mean, goodness. I, I understand that, like the CNCF, you know, the group's hesitation, and and uh, I, I mean, I totally get it, but I think um, it can be misleading because, you know, having like participated in one, I mean, I was a little bit, I had a little bit of, uh, yeah, sort of, I was frozen. I'm like, well, wait a second, do you want me to do <laughs> security assessment? Because I can do that, but that's not yeah. what this is reading like. I mean, so. Um, yeah, I, I I don't even know how to. <laughs> okay, I'll try to come up with a coherent sentence about this. Sure. We actually have another <clears throat> ticket, um, kind of related to this because this was brought up in the past. So you're not the only one to bring it up. Um, to, to talk about how we could potentially take what it is that we're doing and actually turn it into more of a lightweight, um, friendlier actual assessment. I'll see if I can track down what that issue number is and what the status of that is and link them together. But you're not alone. This is something that's been brought up in the past and something that we've talked about. So I thank you for bringing it up. Um, and I'm really happy that we're gonna actually create an issue on it so that we can formalize the dialogue around it. Okay. Yeah, you know, just to add, add uh, a little bit uh, additional context there. We, we're uh, right at the point, uh, you know, when we created uh, this workflow uh, and, and the processes around it, um, we set uh, uh, a goal to have uh, five assessments complete before we sort of ratified it. Um, we're, we've completed that now and we're at the point of ratification. So now is the perfect time to, to go in and sort of tease out, all right, like what are we gonna call this and how do we make this um, you know, approachable to everybody? So, you know, establishing, time. I, th I think the thing that bothered me, um, and I don't see Kapil here, but um, so uh, I will keep it a secret. Like I work at Capital One, right? And um, so Cloud Custodian uh, came from Capital One and it I felt a little uncomfortable. The separation of duties part of me felt really insincere and inauthentic in, you know, sort of self-assessing, you know, and not being a third party. And then I, because I, I'm a big fan of the Kubernetes uh, Trail of Bits work. I mean, I like, like, I worship those guys. I'm like, it's such a good body of work. And you know, I'm like, so where, 
that seems like a really radically different level of, of rigor. And, you know, I'm not calling out specifically cloud custodian, but I, I'm wondering, um, is there going to be a set of criteria? Is there like uh, um, a level of, are there levels established based on, you know, criticality or something of, of the uh, project? You know, I, I don't know, but some, I, I just feel like the process person in me wants to see more uh, specific criteria to sort of create um, a path, uh, a, a process flow for this. It just, um, it just felt a little informal to me and, and considering that people might see that and go, oh, well, it had a security assessment, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry, it's, that's a little, no. uh, I don't mean that's to be, um, <clears throat> Michelle, you're fine. Fantastic. I'm sorry. You're fine. Yeah, absolutely. You're you know, totally it, in, 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 in building, uh, open community that's, you know, entirely volunteer based, um, it, it's, it's an interesting challenge to, uh, you know, to build, uh, you know, opportunities and, you know, direct, uh, you know, intent and interest um, while at the same time balancing, um, you know, formalization and, and processes when um, you have every expectation that, uh, you know, folks may not be available uh, and, you know, may completely go away. Um, you know, as you, you, you have no, um, you know, control with the exception of the, the processes uh, that you put in place uh, and those need to be accommodating enough that uh, um, you know the community members that are responsible for doing it uh, feel accommodated and, and comfortable so you know part of that is uh, also formalizing so I, I think we're we're at that point where we need to, to formalize it and you know uh, someone with your expertise is going to be, you know, really important for us to, um, to be able to define that. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. I, I didn't want to come off blase or overly critical. Um, it is, okay. but I think, um, the second you go from, uh, an open source project to one that's sort of backed by, um, an organization like this, then the level of rigor, uh, the requirements change in my opinion, but. Yeah, Michelle, Mark here. So one of the things that would be useful in the thread that, that is referenced here in the chat is if you can talk about, uh, I'm not going to call them assessments, so I'm going to call it the opposite, like interviews or, uh, you know, a peer review kind of stuff that is, you know, about as far away from red teaming kind of black box testing that you might have, you know, it, some sharing about experiences like that that are more lightweight would be helpful. Uh, in the past, in the same context, I've discussed uh, the interview process that we do, which is a sort of a triage thing for projects that are in early stages. Uh, but that's a pretty maybe too lightweight thing. So the other another approach is embedding uh, knowledgeable people in the uh, in the standups and in some relevant scrums, or you can do it uh, when there's certain checkpoints and releases. So there's a big continuum there. I think it's useful for us to all hear about some of the other lightweight approaches that are being taken, even if we don't pick one of those. Um, the Mozilla rapid risk assessment, um, that, that's one that I remember we utilized that as a framework when we didn't want to do a full threat model at another financial institution where I worked. Um, and we translated that into an RTA a rapid threat assessment, but I'm, I'm sure people are is everyone familiar with that, the Mozilla RRA? Casually. We all I'm use not, for example. Yeah. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can try to do MITRE. There's, you know, th these other frameworks are helpful. You can look at NIST. You know, I'm, I'm an advocate oh. for that, but there's, there's always going to be, uh, what boundary conditions around which you kind of want to have other informalities. You know, as security itself becomes more of an SDLC, as we automate stuff, we're now authoring scripts, whether they're chef scripts or uh, test engineering scripts in the CI/CD pipeline. Uh, these are now 
it's not like we can stand off at a distance and just do black box testing and throw packets at software and really do a very good job at it. So uh, the landscape is shifting underneath us and this problem of finding an appropriate place on the continuum is, is a real challenge and doing it in open source kind of adds yet another wrinkle to this, right? Right. I, I don't know if Ash is on, but when we went through the OPA assessment, I will say they, they didn't have trail of bits, but uh, they had had that Cure 53 do an assessment. But yet we still found an identified uh, process and, and other issues in that uh, in the SIG assessment. So I think they're complementary. But I agree the nomenclature is perhaps incorrect for what it is. Yeah, I think they, it, I'm sure Michelle knows this uh, more deeply probably than I do, but there's a real dangerous precedent set by the people who think of security as vulnerability scanning. It, it really does a disservice to the breadth of what needs to be done in any kind of assessment, whether it's lightweight or, or uh, red team depth. And uh, the frameworks are helpful for that. So you're at least going through checklists, like you, th this is shown in the efficacy of checklists in operating rooms, for example. So I, although we've debated in this venue the value of checklists, I think there is a reason to do that in opposition to the vulnerability scanning approach that's generally taken in this space. Yeah, I think the problem with, um, so I think a lot of this is going to be more theoretical work and more um, sort of soft work, if you will, relating to maybe more like threat modeling because it's outside of an operational environment, right? So you can't, um, it's more going to be focused, in my opinion, on business logic, um, you know, the implementation approach, not so much um, in an environment where you might utilize techniques like that. Yeah. We'll try to get this in the thread, Emily. Yeah, um, definitely. Like, as everyone can tell, this is a this is a good topic. And it's something that we've been t discussing in the past. And it's especially relevant, like Dan said, as we as we come up on that time frame where we really need to start formalizing these processes. So, um, Michelle, if you could go ahead and create that issue um, and definitely tag a few of us in it if you think that um, we've said something here that you, you you want us to capture within that issue, feel free to go ahead and tag us. Um, I've linked the other issue about a hands-on assessment within uh, within the chat here. It's issue number 394. Um, I'll, I'll cross-link that once you post what the new issue is. Um, does anybody have anything else to add? No? Okay. Um, I didn't see anything else on the agenda for the day. And I think everybody's given their updates. Any last words? Don't go away, Dan. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> yes, you there. don't quite Thank get you. to escape. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, last words we love, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, it's been great, and, and I, I look forward to you know sharing some of the uh, sort of uh, unique takes that you know the last decade have um, you know taught me in terms of bringing things forward to standardization and where we are collectively as um, you know organizations looking for. Um, you know, standards and sort of the, the right middle grounds. Um, I'm gonna, uh, you know, be, be taking some passes at, um, uh, you know, changing some of the, the, the uh, dynamics around that. Um, and uh, hopefully it's interesting. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining today. And thank you, Dan, for serving as co-chair. Um, as always, uh, check out the Slack channels. Um, and Mark's going to drop that thread about the GitHub security question that he posted earlier. Um, Michelle is going to work on that new issue for changing what we're calling our assessments to be more accurate and reflective of what the actual process is. Um, and if I missed anything, check out the notes, um, which are linked through our repo. That's everything. 
Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, you all. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Emily. Thank you.